I do the arms. Do I do the <laughs> and hi, ladies and gentlemen. We are finally back for UFC 288 INCS on MMA. Whew. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are breaking down the return of Triple C. Oh my god, honestly. Let's be honest, the rest of the card doesn't actually matter. We're here for Triple C. I don't care about anyone. Yes, <laughs> don't, dude. I'm totally uh, with you. It's Aljamain Sterling, who's somehow still the champion, versus Triple C, who's actually, he's come back. I, I, thought, it, I thought it was never going to happen. And if we talk about this on a literal sense, the winner of this card mm. becomes the GOAT of the Bantamweight division. I'm sorry, Dominic Cruz, <sighs> sit the fuck down. You know what, <laughs> it's, it's true. It's true. Like, I mean... Henry Cejudo, at this point, if he wins, obviously he's the go to the division. He's yeah. beat everyone. And if Aljo beats Triple C, it means he beat Triple C. So you have to give him the credit, you know? Ah, oh, dude, it's... But yeah, yeah let's, let's quickly get into the nitty-gritties of this one. Oh, yeah. Now, firstly, looking at the champion, Aljamain Sterling, he's only ever lost to Marlon Moraes, Brian Caraway, and Rafael Lissanzao, mm. all right? However, there's also... He has luck on his side. He does have luck on his side. Point, yes, he has that uh, knee against Peter Yan and that crazy split decision. But other than that, he's beat a who's who. He's beat Peter Yan. He's beat TJ Dillashaw, a very compromised TJ Dillashaw, yeah. granted. So a lot of people think of him as almost like the paper champ. Yeah, exactly. So this fight against Henry Cejudo, if Henry comes in healthy, this is going to be the true decider for him. Oh, yeah. And I think... Uh... <sighs> You actually just a hundred percent. There's no. It's it's Henry Cejudo. So his his wrestling game is is just amazing. You Sublime. know, it's exactly his stand up. He worked onto the point with his mindset. He worked onto the point where it's just again. It's also sublime and it's just great. Aljamain Sterling has to essentially, like, just he has to go in there and be perfect. I feel like because I almost feel like Henry yeah. Cejudo is like the the level up version of Aljo. You know yeah. what I mean? So for Aljo to beat him. He's got to go out there and just put on one of the greatest performances he's ever had, he's ever had to. You know what I mean? Because exactly as you say, um, Aljamain Sterling is a Division One wrestler. Yeah. Henry Cejudo, Olympic champion wrestler. Yeah. Aljamain Sterling has a few TKOs against prominent guys. Mm -hmm. However, Henry Cejudo has TKOs against TJ Dillashaw. Yeah, I think exactly. Legitimate, exactly. legitimate knockouts against top, top, top guys. And then dudes like Marlon Moraes, by the way, who was the last man to knock out Aljamain Sterling. <laughs> yeah, I did see. So, oof. So if you look at this title bout, it's really going to be a sensational bout. And I, it's beautiful. I'm really struggling to see how Aljamain wins yeah. this one. Maybe I'm going to be a fanboy, but I'm really struggling to see how Aljamain wins this one. I mean, look, one. if he wins this one, I, I'm going to stand up and applaud for him because it, it should be incredible. However, I'm with you on that one. I don't see anything he can do to beat Triple C unless Henry just comes in like, not the same. Yeah. But he's yeah. triple C. He has been training nonstop. You know what I mean? He's also coaching. so damn tactical. He's been coaching so people like oh. John Jones. Dude. You know what I'm saying? Like John Jones, Weile Chang. He's coached Dude. people back to championship belts. Exactly. So I'm, I'm, I'm with you on this one, man. I think Ojo needs to just do something incredible. Otherwise, Triple C is back, baby. Exactly. And you know, if he wins this fight, he's going after the, the featherweight belt, eh? And then he's going to be C4. C4. He's explosive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before we get too uh, carried away with yeah. that one, let's chat about this co-main. We've got Bilal Muhammad mm. versus Gilbert Burns in Gilbert Burns' second fight this month. Exactly, dude. And it's his third fight this year. So... Bit of backstory on this one. This was the slot for Dari Yush versus Charlie Olive, mm. uh, which would have made this card absolutely incredible. But unfortunately, it got pushed back. Um, Gilbert Burns and Bilal Muhammad, I'm pretty sure they just called each other out on social media, and then UFC Brass made it happen. And mm -hmm. here we are. And now this, this is a great fight. So like you said, Gilbert Burns, he's had two fights this month, three fights this year. He's won all of them. He's taken no damage, I mean, clearly. And he's fighting up against Bilal Muhammad, the guy who's no one, no one remembers his name. Um, <laughs> it's funny that you say that because for a guy called Remember the Name who always preaches about how he deserves this title shot, deserves this title shot. If you look at the top five, how many people has he really fought and beat? Exactly. He's he, beat like Neil Magny. He's beat like but, Stephen Wonderboy But Thompson. top five, who is, he hasn't fought any of them. Precisely. And... So, again, so this is a fight that's essentially for uh, title contention. Both of these guys wanted Colby, but Colby wants the belt, so obviously he's not going to take it. Oh, yeah. And this is essentially title contention. 
And look, Gilbert Burns, we said, we've said the same thing about him in like the past two months. There's not much left to say, you know what I mean? If he gets you on the ground, he's going to have immense power. On the feet, he's got immense power. Um, he's just a dangerous man. However, I have noticed that the jab seems to be his weakness. That's true. That even like, um, what's, uh, oh God, uh, Masvidal was actually landing a couple of jabs that kept breaking through and breaking through. And I was just like, shit, okay. Kamaru Usman did the same thing and knocked him out. That's very true. But Bilal Muhammad is not Muhammad Ali. That's true. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bilal Muhammad is a guy who's got very, very average stand-up yes, game. What very he does average. have is a really good clinch game and a really good, for yes. lack of a better term, wrestle-fuck game. Yeah. Now, the thing is this. Gilbert Burns is an ADCC three-time world champion. Yeah. He's a guy who has beaten way crazier guys yep. in the jiu-jitsu game mm -hmm. than Bilal Muhammad. Guys who have way better wrestling than Bilal Muhammad. The way I view this fight right here... Bilal wants us to remember his name. I don't think we're going to remember his name. I don't think he's ever going to see that title shot. No, I don't. I think Gilbert Burns is going to snuff him out. Straight Com up. Completely. I don't think you can actually wrestle fuck a Brazilian. I don't think they'll let you. <laughs> I don't think they'll let you. Like, I think it's something like pride. Like, they just won't allow it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, I think Burns is going to get his third win of the year. Just easy money for this guy and, and set himself up for the title contention. And yeah, Bilal Muhammad... I mean, if he wins this one, hey, good for him. But I really, I think his name is going to be forgotten very quickly here. Yeah. Straight up. Just, it is what it is. Now, going on to our next fight, mm. we've got a really high-level fight in the women's strawweight division. Oh, yeah. With Jessica Andras and Shionan Yang. Did you pronounce it incredibly well? I'm glad, <laughs> glad you took that one, dude. Jesus. So now, diving straight into this one, Jessica Andras has only ever lost to the best of the best of the best. She's officially the gatekeeper, man. Exactly. Now, we're talking people like Weile Chang. We're talking people like Rose Number Yunus. Yep. We're talking Joanna Zhejecik. We're talking um, Raquel Pennington, who's another serious title contender. Mm. Now, Chionan Yan recently lost to Carla Esparza via yeah. TKO. Yeah. And prior to her most recent win, she was on a two-fight losing skid. She has got great talent and she's defeated a lot of great prominent fighters, but it's been a lot of decisions and a lot of stand-up wars. Yeah. And we noticed in that Carla Esparza fight that she really has a weakness when it comes to people who have serious wrestling. Oof, okay. I actually didn't know that in terms of the wrestling. And that just means... This just might be another easy paycheck for Jessica Andrade, who, let's face it, in the women's strawweight uh, division, Andrade is probably one of the more powerful women there. Yeah. I mean, like, in terms of just raw strength and in terms of what she can do. But um, uh, Yan, at the same time, is also quite a, like, a bulky, it's quite a strong-looking woman as well. So this could just be like, hey, this could turn into a slugfest. Who knows? But uh, Andrade can always just lean back on that. If she gets rocked or something happens, she could just take it to the ground. Exactly. Um, and we uh, know Jessica's got that elite jiu-jitsu and um, wrestling due to the fact that she got that standing arm triangle. Oh, yeah. And she slammed Rose number Yunus Just... to death. <laughs> <laughs> she made her delusional. She thought she was the best after that. It was wild, dude. <laughs> Before we settle too, too much on yeah. that fight right there, let's quickly just mm. talk about this featherweight bout. It was supposed to be Movsa Evloev versus Bryce Mitchell. Yeah. It is now Movsa Evloev versus Diego Lopez. Diego. So, uh, Movsa, as you know, he's currently undefeated. I believe it's... Uh, 16 and 0. 16 dude. and 0 undefeated. And he's going up against Diego Lopez, whose record, as it seems, is a UFC debut. Uh, no, no, no. So, his record in the UFC is 0 and 1. I'm pretty sure his overall record is like 6 and 2. It's not that good. Look, he's coming off of Dana White's contender series. And this was like... I mean, well, this is fight week. We're in fight week. Mm. So this is extremely short notice, you know? And the guy popped up. And obviously, you know, if you want to make a name for yourself, show up short notice like Nate Diaz and knock out, a, you know, knock out someone crazy. For example, a dude on a 16-fight win streak. Who's the number 10 guy in who's, the world. Who, and he's a guy that everyone <clears throat> in the featherweight division at the moment is actually a little bit scared of. Like, he's coming up, you know? He's the guy who's like, hey, I'm coming for you guys. So sh shout out to Diego Lopez. But I mean, man... I don't know what you're going to do. This is... So it's going to be a tough fight for him, man. Oof. It's, it's definitely going to be a scary fight. Oh, yeah. um, and now, going into the featherweight bout, we've got a little bit of MMA lineage going on here with Crone yeah. Gracie, yeah. Uh, who is the son of Hickson Gracie, known as one of the best Gracies. 
Um, and when I say best, I mean he's known as the guy who they didn't <laughs> want to put him into UFC because they were like, nah, this guy's just going to beat everyone up and nobody's going to believe that like jiu is that dope because this guy's just so dack and so, so hectic. I just have to go back on something you said. Do you think like the Gracies, when they meet up at like family reunions, there's like good Gracies and bad Gracies. <laughs> like they put each other in the categories. You know what I mean? And it's just the Gracies. <laughs> Hicks, you know you're a bad Gracie. <laughs> You know. <laughs> He's going up yeah. against Charles Jourdain, a bad, bad Canadian dude, man. Poof. That man, that guy just wants to get into a street fight. Like, I'm telling you, dude. Oh. That dude's out here trying to commit homicides. <laughs> like, the KOs that this guy has, it is crazy. They're setting up the classic striker versus grappler. Yep. That's all they want. That's really all they want. And it's a great way to start the card, to be honest. It is an amazing way to start the card. Now, we're just going to touch on a few of the prelims, uh, but we're not really going to go too deep on these mm. ones. Uh, so first and foremost, the, the big headliner of the prelim card, Drew Dover yeah. versus Matt, the steamroller for Evola. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so this one's just going to be a great fight. Drew Dover, it's always great to watch. You know, the guy, I mean, he's just entertaining. He wins, he mm -hmm. loses, but at the end of the day, you love watching him fight. You know what I mean? And then Matt Favola, I actually don't know too much about Matt Favola, eh? Matt Favola is a guy who came off of The Ultimate Fighter. Oh, okay. On that same season with Treshawn Gore. Um, oh, so he's sort of fresh. Yeah, he's he's quite new, but yeah. uh, he, he, he's been doing well in the UFC. Okay. Um, he's got great stand-up. He's got great stand-up. He's quite well-rounded. He's got that American wrestling background as well. Mm. Drew Dober, as we know... Um, He's got knockout power. Yeah. He's got great grappling, but not elite grappling, as Islam Makachev showed us. Yeah. Um, so this is going to be a really interesting bout between two guys. Yeah. And I think it's just going to be quite the scrap. Like, it's going to be a seriously yeah. good scrap. Um, yeah. So I mean, now... Yeah. No, I was just going to say, and don't forget Drew Dober's amazing jawline. <laughs> yeah. Can't I don't know why it. Drew Dober wasn't cast as Superman. Dude! Fuck that Henry Cavill shit. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, um, oh, yeah. now a few fights that we're just going to touch on mm. uh, is in the light heavyweight division, we have Kennedy and Zechugu versus Devin Clark. Yeah. Then we've got Chaos Williams versus Rolando Bedoya. Oh, and shit. then lastly, one of the most interesting prelim fights, we've got Marina Rodriguez versus Verna Jandiroba. Now, Verna, she's ninth ranked, but she's just had such an on-off, on-off, mm. on-off. And Marina Rodriguez, she's got really great stand-up. She's a Brazilian, so we know her BJJ is really good. Yeah. But um, she she's number five in the division, um, and she's really trying to pull things together so that she can go for a serious title run. Yeah, she's just trying. You know, that's it's, 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 dude. The women's story division is essentially just trying to get to that belt. They're all gunning for it because that's a, kind of one of the cool things about the women's division. You could be ranked ninth and still go for the belt, you know what exactly. I mean? It's always fun to watch. If you get some crazy finish. Mm, no, exactly. Who do you guys think is going to win? We all know it's going to be Triple C. I mean, come on. But on the rest of the card, who do you think is going to win? Is Gilbert Burns just going to get his third paycheck of the year already? It's April. It's April. <laughs> like, dude, he, he, when was the Neil Magnify? Like, February. I saw he had two kids in the last fight, so I think he's saving up for college fees. Oh, uh, like, he, he really, like, my niños need good schools. His <laughs> wife sat him down and was like, yo, we need to start like, thinking about finances here, like, <laughs> and the future. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But anyway, as I say, like and subscribe and check us out on the next INCS on MMA. Woo! Woo!